tilt is one of the most destructive forces in gaming. It can cause the best players in the world to fall apart under pressure and cause you to lose control and throw easy wins. Just think about the last time you got deranked after a vicious losing streak or when you kept making dumb mistakes and then suddenly had a toxic teammate screaming at you. Slowly, that frustration probably surged inside of you, and when it heightened past a point of return, you ended up losing your focus and ability to perform. And when your rage and tilt steal your focus and your ability to make good decisions, you spiral farther and farther into that pit of defeat and anger. But this is only one side of tilt. It's easy to look at these experiences and label frustration and anger as your enemy. But what about those players who are insanely good at the game, yet seem to be frustrated almost all the time? Surely, if tilt was so bad, then every pro player should be super chill, relaxed, perhaps even in this constant monk-like meditative state. But in reality, there are many of the world's greatest players who seem to get easily triggered into frustration, constantly balancing on that verge of tilt. So let's dive a bit deeper into how you can gain control over your emotions so you don't spiral out of control. But let's also look at the positive side of tilt and see how you might be able to harness its emotional energy and potentially use it to get an advantage. Let's begin by addressing why tilt is such a common problem in esports. Now, I'm sure you can tell that from your own experiences, you are far more vulnerable to rage and tilt while gaming than during most other activities. Just think about how many times you end up screaming at your screens versus how chill you are throughout your day-to-day -day life. And of course, you're not alone. Even the pros at the top of esports require special training from performance psychologists to help them overcome their own emotions. But why is it so easy to get tilted while gaming? Well, it's really easy for us to form emotional connections to our performance. There's nothing like the joy that you experience when you execute a perfect mechanical combination, or when your team wins an insanely clutch round, or when you finally reach that next rank. But there's the darker side. The pressure and competition in esports can be cruel and unforgiving. Consider that feeling of losing that hard-earned rank, falling behind to a team that's easy for you to beat, or just getting unlucky over and over again. Now, the frustration from these experiences can very quickly cloud your mind and lead you into a state of complete tilt. But where exactly are these feelings coming from? Well, according to psychologist and emotional intelligence expert, Dr. Susan David, emotions are our body's way of communicating our deepest values to ourselves. She outlined 52 core values that most people gravitate towards. Now, each of us holds a handful of these values in the highest of priority in our own lives. And it's these high priority values that ultimately guide and affect your emotions. This is why you typically feel strong emotions towards certain things that others don't feel nearly as strongly about. For example, you might feel completely chill while playing a casual game, but when it comes to ranked, you might feel completely emotional and very easy to trigger into a positive or negative state. This might be because competition is one of your core values. But your teammates might feel certain emotions towards the gaming experience because he values wealth and he sees his gaming career as a way to fulfill that need to earn money and make a living. But this is all great to understand, but we're still left with that big question, which is how do we gain control over our bad emotions so they don't lead to losing control or us losing focus during the game? Well, according to Dr. David, there is no such thing as bad emotion. Sounds weird, right? Well, as Dr. David explains, there are pleasant and unpleasant emotions, but all of them are useful at helping us understand ourselves. 
It's unrealistic to strive to always feel excited or euphoric while practicing or competing because you will inevitably have experiences that make you feel angry, overwhelmed, stressed, or disappointed. And in the past, sports psychology focused on this whole good versus bad emotions thing. They focused on reframing negative experiences through this forceful self-talk and thought-stopping technique. For example, if you felt nervous or discouraged, coaches would train you to shut out those feelings and focus on the positive. And of course, this can be helpful for the short term. These techniques focus on emotional control, which can be helpful for a limited amount of time. Unfortunately, it's not a sustainable method. New research shows that controlling or forcing emotions can actually cause stress and emotional burnout. Psychologist Ed Decky's work backs this up. He concludes that we can't create our emotions because they are responses to stimuli. But we can, however, control how we respond to those feelings and how we prepare for them. In other words, you should never ask yourself, how do you stop this feeling? You should instead be asking, how do I respond to this feeling? Now, all this emotional analysis and Taking the time to think about how we want to respond to emotional situations can help a lot, but it's very impractical to emotionally analyze yourself and respond to it appropriately in the heat of competition. It's not like you can just pause the game for a quick meditation session or journaling session if you feel angry, but this is why it's so critical to prepare your minds before the game. First, it's important to understand that strong emotions, whether pleasant or not, can be useful or distracting. Anger, anxiety, and disappointments are obvious distractions as they can cause us to overthink, second guess ourselves, and lead to playing impulsively. But joy and euphoria can also distract us through making you feel complacent or overconfident. And you, along with many other competitive gamers, have probably, at some stage, fallen into the trap of thinking, this isn't so hard, we'll win easily, only to then lose that game because you let your guard down. Now, I want us to dig a bit deeper into how three different emotions, vastly different emotions, can serve us and help us. But to extract the most value from your own emotions, you need to ask yourself, what is the function or reason for this feeling? Now, let's start with joy. Joy is a pretty obvious one. You probably feel this while you're competing in esports because you're experiencing something which brings you close to your values. You might value competition, autonomy, community, or teamwork. All of these needs can easily be met during your gaming experience, so it makes sense that you enjoy gaming if these are your values. Joy is a fundamental ingredient in experiencing flow as well. If you want to learn more about how the flow state can help you, I also recommend checking out our other videos that I released on the topic. But believe it or not, the pain of disappointment can also be useful. Losing intense rounds, especially when the stakes are high, can really sting. But this pain can also serve as a reminder that competing and proving yourself at a high level means a lot to you. It puts things into a new perspective so that if you find yourself feeling like this, you can take that time to process the loss and use the feelings of conviction to move you towards a strategy that sharpens your focus, gives you the motivation to work hard and earn that next win. But let's look at anger. Anger is also really useful, but it needs to be handled with care. Legendary basketball trainer Tim Grover explains in his book that many of the greatest players he's worked with were so dominant and competitive at the highest level because they embraced their dark side. He explains that his clients such as Charles Barkley, Dwayne Wade, Kobe Bryant, and Michael Jordan were all able to use anger as a tool to fuel their motivation and give them an unstoppable energy to outplay others. So how does this work? Well, I'm sure that you'd agree that when you're angry, you're very certain about your beliefs. For example, have you ever tried to change the mind of an angry person? Chances are they're very stubborn and that anger just reinforces their own beliefs. And this is how anger can be useful. It serves as a reminder of how important a win is to you and gives you the energy to do whatever it takes to win. For example, in the Rainbow Six Grand Finals in 2018, Team Penta found themselves in a 2-0 deficit to Evil Geniuses. 
In an interview, Pengu described how the team was completely tilted at a point where they're screaming at each other and getting out all their emotions. And of course, with one loss away from losing it all, it was easy for them to spiral out of control. But rather than letting the emotions take over in Game 3, they regained their focus, they built back their momentum, and they pulled off a reverse sweep, defeating Evil Geniuses, and of course, becoming the world champions. But how did Penza do the almost impossible by breaking this downward spiral into tilt? Well, the answer likely comes from research into the flow states. Flow science expert Jamie Wheel explained in his 2013 TEDx talk that it's not uncommon for periods of flow to be kickstarted by feelings of struggle and suffering. He explained that feelings of being backed into a corner, like Penta being down two to zero, can put us into a fight or flight response. And if players can respond to this fight or flight response with confidence, determination, and intense focus, it can trigger us into that state of heightened performance. But when it comes to harnessing your anger in a productive way, control is of absolute importance. Letting anger get the better of you is not helpful. So to use your anger as a tool, you have to be in control of your behavior and you need to know how to calm yourself down if that rage becomes a bit of an obstacle. Remember though, that emotions are very personal to each individual and that certain emotional states can be more useful for one person than another. For example, some players might play better when they're angry and riled up, but others might play better when they're calm and in a friendly mood. It's important to note here that emotions, while they can serve specific functions to help us, that they shouldn't always be seen as a means to help us get better in gaming. Emotions are complicated and should always be handled in a way that is healthy for you and for those around you. If you or anyone you know is struggling with emotional trauma, intense bouts of anger, sadness, or anxiety, then I really recommend seeking the right help and therapy. So in this video, we talked about a lot, but what do I want you to take away from it? Well, now that we live in a time where becoming a pro gamer is a very legitimate career, where you can play on stage and earn a salary while becoming a celebrity in the space, the key to doing that all is to develop a consistent level of high performance. And one of the biggest barriers to that is our own emotions. If you can't control your emotions or you can't tap into the ones that help you play better, then you're gonna fall behind and you're never really gonna reach that high level of play. But this video has armed you with the resources and knowledge of how your emotions work and how to use even seemingly negative or bad emotions as good, as tools to help you fuel your performance. So going forward, I want you to pay close attention to your own emotions, close attention to which emotions help you the most and which emotions have been holding you back. Then I want you to develop a healthy relationship with all of those emotions, to think about the bad emotions in a new light and to think about the good emotions as a way to help you accelerate your performance. With enough time, self-reflection, and practice on emotional control, you will slowly gain an ability to tap into this high-performance state on demand and no longer let emotions become a distraction. As a result, you will spiral higher and higher towards even better and better performance. You'll gain an advantage over most other players and you'll start to make progress towards a potential career on that pro stage. Hey guys, I hope you absolutely love this video. And if you want more like this from the channel, then you're gonna have to turn on the notifications and drop a like on the video. I'm not saying that for my sake, I'm saying that because the YouTube algorithm will never show your videos again if you don't do those. And if you're curious about improving your skills a lot faster or even becoming a professional gamer, then I recommend checking out our course in bootcamp. The content in each of those are not the kind of things that you're gonna find on YouTube. So if you're very serious about making it in esports and you're very passionate about that idea of becoming a pro gamer, then it's definitely worth your time. Together, they'll teach you everything that you need to accelerate your skills faster and even build a pro career in esports. And both will teach you a lot of information that most other players in the industry never really learn. So when you start trying out for teams and teaching them your new approach to improving, 
will probably think you're a genius. But anyways, I hope you guys love this video. I hope it helps you a ton on your esports journey. And I'll see you all in the next video.